Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at proof of useful work. So for the past couple of days we've seen Flux unveil their proof of useful work and this video is not attacking necessarily Dynex or Flux. I've just got some questions and it's kind of to provoke some question asking in the community and some back and forth discussion. Not necessarily a debate but just what the opinions of other people are in the community on proof of useful work. So I'd like to invite you guys to comment if you have anything that's wrong with this video or if I've got anything wrong or if you have some kind of rebuttal to some of the points in this video then please leave them in the comments below just a overall discussion about proof of useful work not really an attack on any of the coins I just want to answer some questions and maybe open up some more ways of thinking about proof of useful work. So I've just got a bunch of points listed here and we're going to go through them and I'm just going to explain my points on proof of useful work and then I will throw it back to you I guess in the comments and we'll see where we go from there. So firstly the most important thing I think about proof of useful work is that the whole point of it was for GPU miners to actually use their rigs to perform tasks so another way to bring in profits basically. And the main point of this is optimizing for proof of useful work will not be optimal for GPU mining necessarily. This is in terms of certain hardware that you bought for proof of useful work will not be necessarily good for GPU mining. For example, if you want to do AI learning, there are certain GPUs out there that will be way better for AI learning than there will be for GPU mining. For example, the A2000s or any of the A series I mainly focused on, you know, AI learning over GPU rendering and stuff like that, or GPU mining. I know that they were very efficient, but we have GPUs that are catered towards certain things like proof of useful work, not directly, but for the most part, useful work, such as AI learning. And then we have GPUs that are for gaming. So those will be like your 4030 series, not particularly any of the other series from NVIDIA, but mostly Optimizing for proof of useful work will probably have to include a different type of setup and won't necessarily bring you profits for mining. For example, when we look here, there is four A6000s on this proof of useful work dashboard. A6000s are very good for AI learning, so I don't know actually how well they do at GPU mining, but there's definitely going to be a trade off between setting up for proof of useful work and setting up for GPU mining. Now, the reason that I'm bringing this up is because proof of useful work for Flux is going to work in a model that you mine Flux. And then when it becomes available, I believe you can choose to have your rig switch over to proof of useful work. And if you optimized for that, obviously it would be very good. But if you optimized for GPU mining, you might not receive as much jobs because you've optimized for GPU mining and not necessarily proof of useful work in terms of your hardware on your computer. So that's my first point, and that's not attacking any of the Flux proof of useful work yet. I'm just making a distinction between what proof of useful work will look like in terms of hardware compared to GPU mining. Next is that Dynex is not open with their jobs yet. So when we click here, we can see the finished jobs. I know that we can see the results here, but we haven't actually seen where they've come from. These are all the fees and rewards are 0, 0, 0, 0. There's one job in progress right now, which is a SAT project with a reward of 100,000. I don't know if that is actual a real job or anything. We don't know where it's coming from. This is one of the things that I've talked about Dynex a lot is the jobs that they portray on the network. Also the total reward payouts for miners is completely wrong because they had one that was completed and I have a video of it on my channel. I just can't find it right now but I will try to link it in the description. But I have a video on my channel that says that there was a job completed for 100,000 Dynex, and yet this shows 27,000 Dynex as the total rewards payout. So I'm not really sure how they've actually calculated this or anything, but for the most part, they still are not transparent with their jobs. I want to see if Flux Proof of Useful Work comes out. I want to see the jobs on the network. That is a main transparency point between the miners and the company that is facilitating this, whether it be Dynex or Flux. You need to have that openness to see what jobs are being done on the network. That is one of my problems with Dynex and I've talked about it a lot, yet they said that they will be coming out with it soon. Same for Flux, their pay structure should be very open in terms of the amount of jobs on the network, how they're getting paid out, 
how much is going to each different miner slash proof of useful work rig. You need to be very open with these things so that we can actually see that it's performing useful tasks on the network. And then going back to optimizing for proof of useful work, Dynex seems to pay no matter what the setup of your PC is. So Flux runs it as a useful work in terms of all the hardware that you have on your computer can be utilized in terms of like the CPU and the GPU, which is normally what happens in you know, rendering and stuff like that when people want to rent out hardware to render things like videos or to do AI learning. They normally don't just look at the GPU, they look at the actual overall hardware of the PC and that's what you're renting. But Dynex seems to pay no matter what the setup of your PC is in terms of the fact that all GPUs can run on Dynex. Uh, but there's no mention of CPUs or anything other than GPUs which is contributing to this proof of useful work. They will probably come back and say that it's to do with the neuromorphic chips, but I still don't understand in any possible way how that can translate over to not using your CPU or your RAM to actually perform useful tasks for certain things that people will come to you with jobs. Like you can't come to a person and say, oh, we're only going to use GPUs for these jobs. However, that could be to do with their neuromorphic chips. That's just one of my uh, points that I'd like to point out. Next point that I'm going to go on to Dynex, and remember, I'm not attacking them. I just want some answers, if that makes sense. I'm not necessarily against Dynex. I've mined it. I'm not necessarily against Flux either. I've mined both of them, and I've made videos on them. They're very good coins in terms of profitabilities and stuff like that, but there are some questions that I just want answered. What is the purpose of having the Malib Endpoint Gateway? It's not even decentralized yet, so... If you look on the website, there's this uh, whole, you know, uh, pipeline, I guess. And it says right here that the decentralized Malib isn't even in place yet. So the Malib system is at the core of scheduling and managing computing tasks. So this is what gives the GPU miners tasks, I believe. When you're setting up a miner, you need to connect to a Malib endpoint gateway, and then that will facilitate your GPU performing tasks on the network. So it says here, full decentralization of the Malib by integrating it into the node. So it hasn't actually been fully decentralized yet to the point where anyone can jump onto a node or can create their own node and receive jobs from the network. If we saw that, it would definitely open up more transparency because you could physically get jobs on the network through your own node. However, they don't allow nodes to just come on the network like randomly they only have a set amount of nodes which they can control, I guess. And that brings me on to another kind of point that we have here. If we go down heavily centralized in the right pools. So they need to have open opportunities for anyone to make a pool. And I've got the pools up here. So these are the ones that have been allowed. You can't actually set up your own node. I believe you need confirmation from the Dynex team to create your own node. And this opens up, you know, a lot of discussion because you can only mine to these pools with other coins. Like, so down at Casper coin, we're seeing 55% of the blocks are unknown. So this could be through solo nodes and I've made videos on how to set up those solo nodes. So we're seeing more centralization if you don't allow for open pools to join the network, basically. We need full transparency and we need anyone to be able to create their own pool and run their own node to mine because that furthers the decentralization of the network. Next point for overall proof of useful work is that the input cost for average home miners is too much. This could lead to centralization through, you know, people that have a lot of money could put a lot of money into proof of useful work and get a lot of jobs, if that makes sense. The 40 series is powerful for mining, but not useful for proof of useful work. It obviously can do proof of useful work tasks, but there are way better GPUs out there for example, we have the NVIDIA A100 graphics accelerator, which you can buy if you really want to. It's £11,000 or probably around uh, $12,000. But this is would be great for AI learning. This is what they use in like data centers for AI learning and stuff like that. They use these very powerful, very expensive GPUs. And if you have one of them, which obviously a lot of data centers will, they could, in theory, move their... GPUs over to this proof of useful work network and basically take over it and centralize it. And that's my second point there. In theory, massive data centers can perform these tasks anyway, 
Is there incentive to go to decentralized platforms? Only incentive is cost as these data centers already have the hardware. So they're already running the hardware and I'm not necessarily talking about data centers in general. I'm just talking about places where you can rent computing power basically for AI learning, rendering or gaming or stuff like that. So the only incentive for them to actually offer their services or to go over to a decentralized network is the cost. Like how much profit does that bring in compared to how much it's bringing in for us just regularly. So there's some kind of threshold that proof of useful work would need to hit for them to be like, that is now profitable for us to go over to there instead of just doing what we do right now. And that kind of leads into this other point here. There needs to be an abundance of jobs to really see the appeal of running a proof of useful work rig. So if you're going to optimize for useful work, you would probably need to see a certain amount of jobs on the network before you'd get interested in optimizing for it instead of just mining flux or mining any other coin if proof of useful work comes out for any other ones. In terms of you'd need to optimize for certain jobs which pay a lot of money and you'd need to see regular jobs on the network for you to be incentivized to actually optimize for proof of useful work. My next point here is that Flux could turn into a nice hash type of mining because of the switch into algorithms, opens up more hash rate to perform a 51% attack on smaller networks. For example, what we have here is we can see that Zell hash um, some Blake algorithm, I believe, and ETC hash. So you can actually direct your Flux rigs, I guess if you put it onto this dashboard, you can direct it onto different coins. And I'm assuming that there might be some sort of payment structure where you could actually use it in a nice hash way where you can rent the hash rate. I don't know whether this has been released or announced, but I'd like to see where this kind of network hash rate comes from. Like, can you switch it? Can you rent it? If you can rent the network hash rate off of other GPUs in terms of useful work, then it opens up more percentage of the hash rate to be nice hashable is like the term that they use. So you can rent a load of hash rate on the networks and direct into a smaller coin and basically perform an attack on the network. So if it turns into a nice hash type of thing where you can rent hash rate, then it opens up the uh, barrier, how much hash rate you need to secure a network, if that makes sense. So we don't want smaller coins getting attacked using flux and nice hash basically. So that's mainly what I'm talking about in Proof of Useful Work. I covered a lot of these points. Um, if there's any more, you can leave them in the comments. Uh, these last two points are just more about the hardware and uh, tech companies that are getting involved in Proof of Useful Work and in crypto. So overall, a lot of projects that are just tech companies will use crypto as a funding point. This is what I believe a lot of cryptocurrencies right now are basically the underlying asset for these tech companies. Proof of useful work is definitely for miners, if that makes sense, from Flux. And for Dynex, their computing platform kind of goes hand in hand. So I believe that Dynex was a software or tech company before, and then the funding came in from proof of useful work. So you get a load of miners because you need the hash rate and then you can rent it out, if that makes sense. That's kind of how tech companies would run it. So a lot of these crypto projects, and I'm not saying Dynex or Flux are just tech companies that are hiding under crypto. I just mean overall, there's a lot of cryptocurrencies out there that are basically funding their tech company through cryptocurrency, if that makes sense. Uh, let me know your thoughts on that. And then lastly, the unprofessionalism of certain members of the community on Twitter, basically. So as much as I like having open discussion about platforms and certain cryptocurrency projects like debate wise, like why is this one or we need some proof, that is obviously what I'm looking for as well. So I'm kind of encouraging this a little bit, but the unprofessionalism of certain coins, and I've called Dynex out for this in previous videos, how they are, uh, you know, commenting on certain Twitter posts that they really shouldn't be commenting on because it looks bad on the brand as a whole. I think that they've cleaned up their act since I said that in a video. It might not be because of me. Somebody else might have mentioned it. However, I feel the same in terms of Flux. And Daniel Keller has 
done it in a kind of way, but he still represents Flux. So, you know, we shouldn't really be going to these personal attacks against certain coins. I know that this is to drum up a debate and obviously get answers out of Dynex, but I think we should be more professional on Twitter and just, you know, it looks bad on a brand either way if you're arguing back and forth whether it be through Dynex or through Flux or Daniel Keller. This is not an attack on anyone. I'm just saying it should be more professional because people are going to look at these. They might look at the replies and say, this person might be attacking another coin. So why should I, you know, go into this coin if there's some unprofessionalism that is happening throughout the network of the coin, I believe. And in terms of the brand of the cryptocurrency, it doesn't look favorable because you're out there attacking other coins. This is not an attack on anyone in particular. I'm just saying, stop being unprofessional. Dynex, I called them out on it before, and they've since cleaned up their act. They haven't been going as much back and forth with people on Twitter, like random accounts, which is good. So we're seeing some kind of more professionalism go into the Dynex network or the uh, people that run it. And I want to see the same for all cryptocurrencies across the board. That's all my thoughts on proof of useful work and just on these two main points at the end. Please let me know if you have any questions or anything that you disagree with. Put them in the comments below. I probably got a lot of things wrong in this video, so you can correct me on that. I'm open to discussion and I'm open to changing my mind about certain points that I've listed here. So if you did enjoy this video and you agree with the points, please like the video and subscribe for more content like this.